Oh, all right then. We'll show you what I have I get I did. Get you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good start. Good start. Good sir knight, I challenge thee. I challenge thee to a duel of the fates. And then dodging. Nope, not dodging. Now dodging. Now dodging. Have at ye. Nope. Still not happening yet. <clears throat> Alright, let's give this a shot. This time, this time, this time we will take the time to bring up the health and stuff. I'll show you what for. I'm Super Sand Legend. Oh, 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 oh. No good. Couldn't you plan everything else is blah 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 blah. Yes. Blah 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 blah. The end. Ah, I didn't even realize I was on the last chapter. What happens if we load now? What happens? Am I stuck in an infernal loop that it keeps loading me to the same spot every time? Well there you go. Greetings, citizens of the internet. It was going to be that, or it was just going to be like, Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Atratsu, and today, this week, I bring you a, probably going to be one of the shorter videos. This is a game called Which Sword? Whose sword? That sword? The sword over there? Your sword? My sword? I don't know which sword, but it's one of them swords. Which Sword was developed by Li Chang Chun, and was released January 8th, 2018. It's priced at $2.99, or your regional equivalent. Yeah, it's a, uh, I guess, kind of 2D side-scrolling adventure RPG-ish game. In many ways, it reminds me of Trine, and I'm sure it's this person's first game. Playing through the whole game can take you about <clears throat> about three hours. Excuse me in advance, um, I've got a cold again. It's been a really tough winter for me. <laughs> I keep getting sick. It wasn't my plan to eat junk. I don't, like go picking up gravel being like mm, I'm just gonna eat this and get sick so apologies in advance for my voice please bear with me uh, should be I'm, I'm on the up and up I'll be better soon so let's just jump into it and talk about this uh, this game so what you have here first is the version of the cutscenes so in between every combat area that you have you have your story that's here and as you can see, there are two languages, Chinese and English. And for one section, it switched over to Chinese automatically. As you can see at the bottom, they have it in English. But there's one chapter that I got to where it switched to Chinese. So it still has some bugs in it. This is a game that is going to slip through the cracks for pretty much everyone. I think last time I checked the Steam page, there were like four written reviews, one actual written review that shows up on the store Steam store page, and um, I have I have added like, I've taken about three or four screenshots, which now means that I have um, most of the screenshots on this game on the Steam screenshot area for it. Yeah, it's, it's gonna slip through the cracks for a lot of people. So, the nice thing that I can say about it is that th for somebody's first game, this is really ambitious. Controls pretty well with uh, the WASID controls. It seems that it was designed more for a controller. You have the two number values up here. Your, 10, your 100 here is mana or ability points. So if we draw our weapon and like do a bunch of dodgy type things and do a bunch of swingy type things. Normally that number goes down. I think it might also be shield. That might be what it's also linked to. And then you have the 100, red 100 here. This is your health. As that goes down to zero, you die. Pretty straightforward. These three bars up here, 
I have no idea why you'd want an extra bar on an equal sign, but if you click this, you go right back to square one. Then you have this book, which I don't know why this book is here. Nothing happens if I click it. And then you have these other values up here. These weren't really well explained to me on what they're actually for. I kind of figured it out on my own. And we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, it's your health potions. And these numbers here will fluctuate. They'll go down from 100. And I, I don't know. The tutorial explains how you move. Pretty straightforward. You use shift to sheath or... Can I, yeah, sheath or unsheath your weapon. You move to the right, you find items, you pick this up, and then it'll increase the flower point up here in the top left. There, now you got 11. Ta da! Ta da! Run over here, okay, we'll pick up another one. 12. Look at all of these that we have here. The environments themselves are pretty interesting, actually, because you have a lot of, like, good stuff. A lot of good work that's done as far as the background and the foreground. Again, I'm looking at this in terms of somebody's first video game. The combat, though, uh, kind of uninspiring. So you can see that as you do damage, you bring down that number. And then if I use magic, I use magic with the Q key. That then brings down my mana level, which slowly regains over time. This guy is also regaining health. Not health. Regaining energy or whatever it is. I don't even know. Like I said, I don't even know if it's actually explained what all it's for. Yeah, that's a weird thing. It's like, you can use the J to attack. Or you can just, you know, left click. I think right clicking is blocking. There is this, like, slight shift that the character has. But I actually went through the entire game without blocking. Uh, that isn't to say that I went through the entire game without dying. I died a crazy amount. Okay, so we'll block. Look at us. We blocked. Kasha. Kasha. Alright, shoot your arrows. Blocking. Kacha, we'll get you now. No, no, as soon as you come in range, I will get you. I will get you so good. Come here. Where do you think you're going? That's right, we all fall down. So we keep running to the right. Keep running to the right. We run a little more. Then we get here, and it's like, now we're going to teach you how magic works. You go over here, and you're like, all right, Kyuki. Kacha. Kacha. Kach. Nope. When he's out of range, that's what you do. You do this little figure eight whatever you whatever that shape is I should know what that shape is considering that I do that in my martial art training I don't even know what that's called what's that called leave a comment there you go I think of it's like weaving maybe that's what it's called I don't know and you can summon a little companion person here by running up here and pressing F again I don't I'm not sure what those symbols mean that symbol mean, meant that I I can't always summon them I don't know you don't need to worry about friendly fire. You cannot hurt your little buddy here, which is apparently a zombie. It's always a good idea to summon them when you see them because they will follow you through areas sometimes. Don't know what this guy is. I always thought of him as a reject void walker. Typically, as far as the combat's concerned, I use magic very liberally. I just shoot everything that I can with magic. You should have waited for him to help us, but I didn't because I don't want to wait for him. And then you just keep on going to the right. And we soon leave the area. You just keep on scooting this way. And there's never a reason why you'd ever sheath your weapon. Not that I would know anyway. Unless you want to walk really slow. Then you get to this point. So, something that you should probably know about me is that uh, when I sit down to play a game... If I want to read, I need to be in a mood for it. That's why I have started playing Elder Scrolls Morrowind, and I haven't yet covered Morrowind on this because I've played like maybe four hours of it, and I, I'm not always in the mood to sit down and read. So unfortunately for which sword, which sword not the real question, the question was feel like reading, and no, I did not feel like reading. So I read for a little bit, and it sounded interesting. This protagonist's name is uh, Griffin. I don't know. It's not spelled like the mythical creature, so there's that. Uh, you got bandits that he's like, I'm going to fight. And then he just scares them away. And then whoever has faced Larry here, oh, Lucky Day, other, otherwise known as Larry, is like, hey, I'm going to pay you back for your goodness. And then it's about here that I'm just like, really? Um, we're, we're still still going on with this explanation and I got tired of reading and then I went to uh, the spamming of the spacebar to get through here just to see what the combat sections were 
and the combat sections are the probably one of the less inspiring parts of the game so it's uh you know pretty yeah. it, not much is going to keep you keep you interested you could definitely spend your money on worse games that's for sure there's definitely a lot of effort that the person put into this and maybe it's told better if you speak chinese there is a little bit of transition uh translation problems and um, I'm not so fond of just how much reading I need to do each section. I'm also not particularly good at the combat section either, so, you know, that and I don't understand what the numbers mean. I just have a basic fundamental know-how of how it works, and I know enough to be able to get through the game. So, we should probably get hurt a few more times, then I'll demonstrate what I'm talking with with all these. So there are additional, like, actions that you can take. So I can use the number keys, so I'll use two, and that will be the same thing as if I clicked this up here, which if you click, you also do your little jump forward thing. Sometimes you find these doorways here as well. So just for people that are interested in making games, it's always a good idea to make sure that you don't leave open areas like this because an open area, naturally a, a player wants to explore the environment around them, and it's better to just not give that option at all, like not giving the hope of that option at all, because it makes the player more upset that that is not actually an option. It's just kind of game theory kind of stuff. Highly recommend checking out videos on game theory if you want to get into game uh, making games. I do know that one pretty well anyway, is that you, you, you wouldn't want to leave an open space here. If you did want to leave an open space, you should have like a clear, clear path and it should be very clear to the player where you can go and where you can't go. That, or just let the player travel in here and close the doors or something like that and just, you know, let me wander around. There are some spots that I can wander around in, but there are many spots that I cannot. So something like this, where you have it all fenced off here, there's clearly no way that you can get around here. Also, I really wish I had a dash key. Technically, we're always dashing. And sometimes in the game there are multiple branching pathways, like what we have here. Can I go this way? See, this is one of the cases where you can go through here. And then there's over here, you can go into this house. There's nothing to reward you for going into this house whatsoever. This is where you should put items or something like that to keep you interested. Thankfully, I haven't run into too many problems with the NPC getting in your way, but I could, could see that happening very often. Sometimes when you explore down paths, you do find extra pick upable items, which then will increase the number here. And then you can use that to... I guess make items basically the, these are materials up here and these are let's dodge yeah all right yeah would we'll dodge yeah I'm standing on a fence dodging yeah I will get you what I don't know if these are technically escort missions because again the NPC never actually died with me so I don't know if you fail if the NPC dies or not I can't comment too much on what the overall story is for the game because, like said, I d d just didn't feel like reading. My basic understanding is you're a character with secret superpowers because what kind of swordsman naturally is able to just fling around magic from their fingertips? So you got some kind of special power and you're a mercenary for hire basically and you get yourself wound up into some kind of adventure that's pretty much how every story goes right okay so now we get to this point so once you get to zero now is when so okay you click here i'm not sure why that worked that way so we'll do that all right okay so this is your total number 100 six two so that's the amount that it's taking so you eat that, and then that increases that, and then that increases that. So this is your max value. It's there, and then you can keep doing this to convert your ham sticks into uh, clearly ramen noodles. And this final button over here, you could use three. I think it's an attack power-up. I haven't used them very much. There are some particular parts in the game that get a little bit tricky for me, and I have used them at that point. That's about the extent of it. So we will continue to run this way, or rather, sidestep gracefully-ish. Hasha. Hwacha. I tend to use magic to knock him back, and then I follow it up with the sword. That's, that's my strategy. 
There's Atratsu's pro tips. You too can be very good at a game that no one else has played. That looked like the monk from Diablo. You run here, you pick up a flower, you're like, yay, I picked up a flower. And then because you don't want to walk agonizingly slow, you pull out your sword and run forward. Can totally get behind that, why not? Now there is something worth noting here. If we die, let's just let's just demonstrate what it's like to die. It's it's not hard to do, trust me. You can die pretty easy. This is a debuff. This debuff is awful. If one of us hit, if one of them hits us, whoosh, aww. I've noticed that that debuff can get me one hit killed before. So anytime I see that, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Maybe it required me to have like no energy or something like that. But yeah, you die, you get back to this screen, and you're just like, let's load. You load back in here, you pick up the flower again, you draw your sword, you shuffle forward. And is it going to be the same one? Sometimes it changes, so there you go. You have two different enemies to fight now. Now if you ever want to get out of it, press escape and BAM, you're right back to this one. Beware hitting the new button, it doesn't give you a, are you sure you want to? It'll reset your save pretty much immediately. It will reset your save immediately and you won't be able to load back into it, but catching up doesn't take very long. Most of this game is going to be drawn out depending on how much you feel like reading. The gameplay itself isn't going to drive you much farther into it than what you've seen here. If this game looks like something that you're interested in, which sword is definitely worth checking out. If nothing else, then just to encourage Li Cheng Chun. I th that's the developer's, na developer's name. I'm going to go with hopefully that's their name and hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. Um it would be good to encourage this person um but for the price of two dollars and 99 cents i don't know that that's going to be that's going to be up to your call on value on what you want to be doing um yeah i won't make that call for you hopefully this was some help um a question at the end do you does, does anyone have any games that they've played like this before the only game that i can compare this to that i've played has been like uh, trying, but trying at a completely different uh, approach in that more of it was a more puzzle platformy type thing, not just a side scrolling. I don't know. I don't know how to describe this game. But yeah, let me know if you played anything like this. And yeah, stay tuned for next week. We'll have a. I think. I think I have a much more interesting game lined up for what we'll be talking about next week. So again, my name is Atratsu. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Atratsu signing off.